So hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we are joining this. Uh, we are starting this webinar uh, very shortly. We are good to good to start, Rahul. All right. So hello and welcome everyone to the first virtual conference on private label and OEM opportunity by IndianRetailer.com, powered by Unbrand Asia, knowledge partner Daemon, in association with Franchise India and India Licensing Expo 2020. Today's discussion will revolve around private label opportunity amidst and post COVID-19. I am Rahul Kurana from Unbrand Asia and I'll be hosting this webinar. The agenda to be discussed during this session is amidst these unprecedented circumstances owing to the novel coronavirus outbreak and the ongoing economic downturn, we are going to find answers to the opportunities that may crop up in private label and contract manufacturing space. Let me start by laying out the ground rules for all, for, uh, all attendees. The discussion will go on for approximately 90 minutes. We have a welcome address keynote followed by a panel discussion. Each session will be followed by a Q&A session. If you have any question during the course of the discussion, you can post them through the Q&A option at the bottom of your screen. Mention in your question if it is directed at any specific panelist. We will take up questions, post the first keynote and after the panel discussion. Please, please participate in poll during the webinar. We would also like to request the attendees to keep the question within the scope of the discussion today and not pitch their business. Let me now invite Mr. Sachin Maria, President and Publisher at Franchise India and Entrepreneur Asia Pacific to deliver an opening address. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Maria. Over to you. Mr. Maria, if you could unmute yourself, we can't yeah, hear you. Sure. Uh, thank you, Rahul. Uh, uh, thank you, Grafner, everyone. And thank you, NA, for, uh, for taking time out for sharing uh, uh, the insights. Uh, private label and OEM opportunity is one of the, one of the key areas wherein we've, we've received a lot of interest in last uh, unfortunate 30, 35 days of lockdown and uh, the COVID situation, which we're all experiencing in the last quarter, uh, this quarter. Uh, you know, so first of all, let's let me let me wish uh, well for everyone here. Uh, you know, you know, hope all of us are keeping safe and um, you know um, working in the conditions that we are in. But uh, most importantly, keeping keeping ourselves socially distant. Uh, uh, as far as uh, the topic coming um, is concerned, we we understand the opportunity which India holds today, both from an organized retail or retailing at large and the consumption opportunity which we, uh, which we offer. And I think times like these actually are uh, further making situation for a value market like India to look at uh, great products at great price. And I think one of the key opportunities which we see at Franchise India and uh, Unbrand is to enable a lot of manufacturers, a lot of potential entrepreneurs to look at private label as a key opportunity. Uh, this would also create a huge consumption opportunity for a new buyer to come in to experience great products. And uh, we are very thankful to Daemon for uh, taking this initiative with us to educate our community on uh, best practices and know-how on private label. Um, at Unbrand Asia, we are trying to sort of bridge this gap between uh, between uh, an entrepreneur who's seeking opportunity and also a, a potential manufacturer who's, uh, who's looking at uh, new avenues for growth. Uh, uh, I'm not an expert on this subject, but I think one of the key questions that, are, that I seek from this panel uh, today 
is how the India market would open up as an opportunity for, um, for new products to be invented as well as uh, distributed. And uh, one of the key areas that I see as a, as, a, as a key question which is coming up is that can India replace as a, a manufacturing hub um, uh, with, uh, with the China situation that we are all experiencing. Um, lastly, uh, you know, the, the consumption opportunity of India, I still feel uh, holds very few, um, 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 a, a huge unlock opportunity. And under unbrand, which, which in itself uh, uh, indicates what we are referring to, uh, we feel that this unlock opportunity could be very well discovered and um, eventually all stakeholders, um, um, the retailers, the manufacturers and the consumers stand to benefit from it. So I, I keep it short. Um, uh, thank you very much, uh, Rahul. Um, over to you. So thank you, Mr. Maria. Our keynote speaker for the day is uh, Ms. Anne Ravelet, Head of Insights and Innovation, Damon International. This session will be for approximately 15 minutes, followed by question and answers. I would now request Ms. Anne Ravelet to start the session. Over to you, Ms. Anne. Hello, thank you very much. I'm going to um, share my screen if uh, I can, as it seems that I can. Okay. Um, and I really like the way you pronounce my name. Uh, I mean, I like uh, the Annie Revelet. Uh, thank you very much for that in the morning. Um, so, um, well, good, good, good afternoon, good morning to everybody. Um, I'm, I'm really thrilled um, to, to take some time today to share with you um, Damon's perspective on the evolution of private brand globally and uh, what we can see as the future of the industry, which is really about moving from being imitators to, to innovators. Um, as we all know, um, private brand is a part of the industry that is, being, um, that is best positioned to provide relevant solutions to, to changing um, consumer needs, both with the physical store, but also beyond. And we see that um, the digital is growing um, and, and actually private brand also has a role to play here. Um, if managed properly, actually private brand can become a key strategic lever for retailers and for manufacturers to drive um, differentiation and loyalty. This is what we've seen um, going uh, throughout the years and that we keep on seeing happening. And so the goal for today is really to inspire new thinking on, on private brand and to make sure that it ensures a long-term and sustainable growth. Before we, we start um, talking about uh, private brand and figures, um, let me share with you this, this picture um, and um, share with you how, what I see. Um, I mean, we see an avocado, we see a fake avocado. Uh, what I see as a private brand expert is a retailer that has been disrupting a really well-established category. Um, the Easter chocolate category is, is a really traditional category. It's difficult to innovate. It's difficult for consumers to get out of their comfort zone. And um, actually, um, this product that was launched by Waitrose um, in 2019, um, was quite a disruption. Um, if we hear what the um, category manager was saying, she said that she was inspired by the continued trend, continued trend of all things that are avocado related, and she wanted to create a fun addition to the Easter egg range. Um, and that's really what innovation is about. It's about looking at what you could bring more to your category, um, think differently, look at what's happening, um, yeah, in food, what are the key colors um, to, to, to bring something really exciting to, to your category and, and create a buzz and, and, uh, and impact your consumers. And, and this really impacted consumers as um, what we know is that this Easter egg was actually the fastest selling Easter egg in the old waitress um, and partners history. Um, but uh, definitely this didn't happen in one night uh, and private brand has been on a long journey to get the level of affinity and credibility um, that um, it has today. And this evolution has been really driven by the constant focus uh, by retailers and manufacturers on improving the quality and treating private brands 
as brands um, that adapt to the changing consumer needs and, and preferences. Um, I mean, private brand has been on a long way since the first one that were launched uh, in the 19th century. And sometime in the 70s, um, we started to see things uh, changing, retailers starting to internationalize, um, have some more size to allow um, them to have their own brand. But at that time, we are talking about the generic brands. These even didn't carry a brand per se. Um, and they really appeared on the basic and low involvement categories like paper goods or the canned food. It has been evolving and today we see that many retailers do really recognize that private brand can be much more than a price alternative uh, and can be the reason for consumers loyalty and for retailers differentiation. If we look at today and if we look at, for instance, uh, Simple Truth, um, we don't really see a private brand nowadays. We see a brand um, that was more than $2.3 billion annually and that keeps on growing. Um, and this is the reality of, of private brand today. This is what few are, um, the few reach that stage and, and we foresee that majority um, will, will, will reach it soon. Um, why am I saying that? Um, we've been analyzing at Damon um, about 60, 65 different markets from different countries, from different retail maturity levels, for us to understand exactly, well, what are the different stages of private brand? There is no one private brand reality. Um, no market is similar. There, there are different levels of, of, of maturity for private brand and different levels of reality for private brand. And looking at all this data um, and also our experience in all these countries, uh, we were able to build um, the five stages of private brand. Uh, the metaphor of the mountain is um, the one that best explains this journey. Um, and so it starts with the base camp, which is countries in which we have quite a low PV share uh, below 3%. And we see that PV here is really um, a copycat approach. So we can think on the generic um, um, from the 70s, 80s. Um, till the top, um, which is where PB accounts for actually more than 40% of uh, grocery sales. And here we see that um, private brand is really differentiating from national brand and even targeting uh, specific consumer groups. Um, where is, it, it, I mean, this is good, but it's always good also to put some countries uh, to, to see, um, for instance, where is India on this map? And what we see is that India today is on the camp one. Uh, together with countries like um, Brazil or South Korea. Um, what does this mean? Um, this means that, uh, well, retailers have already started to invest on private brand program, and we see a new generation of shoppers that is emerging uh, and that is willing to try new products. So normally at this stage, this is the moment we start to see an evolution from um, copycat products to a good, better, and best uh, strategy where retailers are also using it to push on price and quality to, to target different um, consumer groups. Talking about uh, India, um, well, um, you know it much better um, than, than I do as you're based there and, and I'm based in Portugal. Um, but if we analyze uh, the markets uh, and if we, dig, we dig in the market and what we can see is that well, India is a really complex uh, and I would say an organized retail in the sense that it's not a modern trade um, market. Um, and majority of the grocery sales are generated by um, non-modern trade uh, stores like the Kihanas and the specialist uh, shops or the markets. Um, and we see that modern retail is, 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 has been starting to invest um, on the market. Um, those struggling um, a little bit because it's not easy to change consumer habits. Um, even though the modern trade accounts for around 2% of the grocery sales, uh, actually it's such a sizable market uh, in terms of, of value that it's a huge opportunity. And uh, if we look at um, what's the forecast for India as a grocery market by 2024, it is uh, forecasted to be the third major market after um, China and USA. So um, this is quite a major opportunity for modern retail. Um, grocery sales, uh, modern retail sales should grow and, um, and, and, and uh, um, sales as well. 
And when we talk about modern retail, we cannot not talk about private brands. Um, that is a, a key driver for, for growth. Um, we expect it um, from the history and from the different countries' experiences to actually play a big role in generating uh, footfall in stores, um, as um, there are an opportunity to win shoppers uh, for retailers and also um, deliver high margins. And this is something uh, that we start to see as we've seen that, for instance, the Future Group or Reliance uh, Retail, but also um, Growfers have been uh, communicating uh, recently on their plan to, to invest on private brand in the future. Um, when we talk about um, private brand, we cannot uh, forget uh, the consumer because the product is bought by a consumer. And um, if we look at who is the Indian consumer today, um, it's quite interesting to see that uh, consumer is following um, a similar trend as in other countries, meaning that um, they are also embracing an healthy and sustainable um, lifestyle. I've put here some, some figures just for us to understand a little bit um, what, what we are talking about. Um, and um, almost nine out of 10 Indian consumers are actually considering the plant-based claim as, as very appealing. This is actually the most important claim um, before a vegetarian, dairy alternative or, or sugar-free. So we see that uh, the plant-based um, um, trend that is booming in the US and in Europe is also something that makes sense in the Indian market. Um, also, because we know, and, and I will talk a little bit more about the plant-based uh, afterwards, uh, but it also relates a lot with the ethical uh, behavior and the fact that Indian consumers are really looking to, uh, they really consider that ethics and sustainable lifestyle are very are important um, to their life. Um, and they are also looking for having an healthier um, um, life and, and they consider that products play an important role um, in there. Um, so if we connect this with, with private brands, um, I would like to start by um, providing um, a KPI um, that is uh, quite important. So this is a study that uh, we've run um, and that may surprise you, but when we look at uh, different retailers and we look at their national brand assortments, uh, what we've identified is that 98% of the national brand assortment across stores is the same. Um, I mean, this may sound like a really simple data point, but uh, if we think on the implications, it's quite uh, significant because this means that there is very little differentiation from one store to the other one. Um, and so this is also where we see that private brand can step in and can serve that critical role in creating a true point of differentiation. Um, and the, the good news is that, well, um, not only is it an opportunity, but consumers are giving um, retailers the permission to really innovate and lead with, with private brands. Damon run a um, study in different countries from different uh, stage mat maturity stages um, to understand what's the, 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 the shopper um, perception on private brand. And it's quite interesting to see that um, they consider um, that private brand quality is as good as national brand and that um, they buy them on nearly every shopping trip. Um, and if we, we see a similar consumer sentiment in, in really different parts of the world, so to give you some idea, for instance, in Germany, 72% um, of the show, shoppers are saying that they shop at a store because of their private brands, or in the UK, um, they say that they buy private brands every month. If the statistics differ from one country to, to, to another, what we have to, to see is the big picture and to see that wherever we are in the world, um, the, um, we see that consumers are really ready for um, retailers to get more aggressive in uh, pioneering and innovating with their private brands. Different stages, but wherever we are, we see that consumers are more and more trusting private brands, see it as adding value. Even um, they, some say that a private brand fits their lifestyle and offers them the products they need. If they are lactose intolerant, you will find private brand products serving that need. Um, so this is, this is a key and huge opportunity for private brand across the world. 
uh, and definitely we see progressive retailers that are accepting this, this challenge. So you see here my, my really uh, favorite product of the moment, which is the Czech chocolate avocado from, from, from Waitrose, but um, Loblo's uh, was quite uh, outstanding uh, some time ago as they were the first one to launch a cricket flower uh, under their private brand. Or you can think on Kroger that has been really innovating in flavors and in, um, in sensory experiences. Or uh, Walmart uh, with a plant-based skincare line. Uh, and, and we have many, many different um, examples showing that um, retailers are really trying to differentiate not only from their um, retailer competitors, but also from national brands. Uh, and this um, brings me to um, the, the differentiation and, and where, where we sit and where we want to sit as a retailer. So if we start by, it, it always starts by taking a critical look at, at the private brand program and identifying where you are today from an innovation standpoint and where you want to be and set stretch goals to get there. So to illustrate this a little bit, um, I'm taking the example of the Humus category um, from um, Low Blows. Um, and we see that it really starts with um, the basics, having those core products uh, that are really alternatives to national brand. We can talk of the original Humus, or in the case of uh, Canada, organic is also um, an expected product uh, for private brand on this category. Um, but um, as you get more committed to innovation, uh, you start to fast follow um, the national brand's innovation with new flavors, new format, new packaging. And for instance, here we see that Loblo's beyond the original and the organic has been developing, for instance, a red pepper chip lot or a single serve uh, hummus um, that you can take on the go uh, to serve the need of uh, always um, the on the go need. Uh, but it doesn't stop here and uh, what's, um, Loblos has been doing here is really leading the market and dri driving innovation beyond the national brand um, to lead the category development. If we think on the example of the um, Easter egg from Waitrose, um, this is quite a similar thing. Um, they looked at uh, what's happening in the fresh, what's happening, uh, what's trendy, what consumers are looking for, and they decided to launch a sliceable uh, hummus roll. Um, um, they also saw that uh, grains are really trendy, that beyond chick chickpea, you can have other grains that could be appealing for this category. And so they developed, um, for instance, a lentil um, hummus. And this is really where private brands is no longer a follower, um, even, even if we are talking of following innovative national brands. It's where private brand is actually setting the stage um, and, 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 and becoming the new, the new benchmark. And for that, it requires to follow the consumer to understand what consumer is uh, shopping, how he's behaving beyond uh, the, the, the category and not um, considering that competitors or national the, the other private brands are your competitors, but actually not considering any competitors looking at what they have to see what you could add um, to there. Um, but, but I mean, the reality is that we have few retailers that are, that are there, um, but not everybody is, is there yet. It will take some time. Um, and um, I mean, we see that the gap between what we call the best in class uh, private brand retailers uh, between the, uh, with the average retailers is really widening um, with, for instance, two, greater, two, two times greater assortment differentiation on um, added value uh, products, uh, more items launched, and um, um, a faster growth rate for, for these retailers. Um, so we see the benefit of uh, going for innovation. We see it has an impact on, 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 on loyalty and on, on sales. Um, we are at the beginning of it, and so now it's uh, time for, for retailers to really see who they are, what they want to be, and uh, draft the roadmap to go there. Um, but if you want to, um, what we see with all these retailers is that if they want to disrupt, if they want to lead with innovation, they really have to focus on, on what's next and what's next in innovation. Um, the, the three key areas that um, we can see are um, the plant-centric 
um, which uh, is um, becoming the new organic and I will uh, quickly go through it as uh, um, there is a lot to say. Um, the fit for functionality and the connectivity through the 360 um, uh, sensory experience. So when we talk about uh, the plant-centric, what we can see is that uh, what started as a food trend and a diet for some as is quickly becoming the modern day lifestyle. And we see that this is really following the footsteps of organic. That's why we are talking about the new organic. Um, um, and we see that yeah, consumers that are seeking healthier uh, products, but also cleaner products for the environment um, and that are trying to lower the impact on the, on the planet are really looking for, for solutions. And it was complicated some time ago, but it seems that um, this is really, um, the plant centric is really becoming um, a solution to it. And there are two ways to address it. One is to um, the plant forward solution. I will go really fast, which is basically about not the product not being only a plant centric product, but the plants has some benefits. We know that the ancient grains, we, we, we heard a lot about the superfood and actually this is now capitalizing on this superfood and, and, and this aspect of the product so that it's not only that it's um, meat free, but it's also beneficial to your health. And the other thing is the eco formulation, which is where we can start here to talk about, for instance, the circular economy and the fact that uh, um, it, it, a product doesn't stop um, on the shelf and you can actually um, give an afterlife to it. Um, and we see that, I mean, retailers are really starting to play out um, on this. And I've put here some, some few examples uh, low blows, uh, for instance, with a vegan cheesecake, but it's not only about food and actually the um, plant based uh, started with non food. Uh, or you have this example with CVS with a plant based um, sleep support um, or um, Casino that uh, launched a sincere brand. They were they had to comply to a new legislation in the EU uh, about disposable materials and rather than just substituting the products by um, um, eco-friendly solutions. They created a new brand and extended to other categories like for instance textile um, and um, home textile and uh, fashion textile. Um, so they really embraced it and communicated and made it a, made a strong statement on it. Um, when we talk about the fit for functionality, uh, well it's about the redefinition of functionality. Uh, functionality has always been here but we see now uh, it a little bit evolving. Um, we have, majority of us have a really complicated and dynamic life. Um, um, we, want, we have many things to do, we cannot even finish to do everything in a day, and on the top of that we want to have an healthy life. So it's not easy, and we see that consumers are really seeking um, for solutions that serve, um, that serve that purpose and make their life easier. And for that, um, it's really about um, the peak performance, meaning that it's the right product for a specific need. I want an energy boost or I want to rest, I want to feel uh, cool. We will have solutions for, for all that. Um, and the other thing is the simplified delivery system, which is um, well, making it um, available at any time. Um, and, and once again, we definitely see retailers uh, that are uh, taking that step and we see, for instance, low blows with uh, the freeze dried uh, smoothie melts, which are um, frozen uh, smoothie melts so that it's easier to do, it's healthy, it's, um, it's uh, yummy, it's, um, it serves the needs. Um, or Lidl with the energy and endurance bars that are really about uh, searching for boost at a certain moment. So it's no longer a snack bar, it's really uh, energy and endurance. Um, and the last are the Amazon meal kits that are really about um, facilitating the cooking experience at home with everything prepared. You just need to assemble at home and, and do, do the magic. Uh, they strongly believe in it and we can, that's why for instance, we see that these meal kits are even now in, the, um, in their stores. Um, the last Last key uh, trend that we see for, 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 for innovating is really about um, the sensory experience. Um, we see that consumers are really looking for dynamic and immersive product experiences, which are of course also an impact of the technology, um, the, 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 of technology and um, um, social uh, medias. 
And so here we can uh, tap into uh, dynamic pairings, um, leveraging new collaborations between sense and taste, for instance, um, or the experience, um, experience with the packaging, novel packaging, or um, what we call the fashion of consumables and, and giving a new appeal to consumable products. Um, some, some iconic examples here will be, for instance, the Walmart um, unicorn sparkle ice cream, um, where this is really about uh, the visual experience. It's, it, it's, it, it's really blending the, um, the taste experience with the visual experience. Um, you also have this interesting product from Lidl, um, um, which are street food uh, pancake burgers. And, and here, um, the packaging plays a really important role in telling the story of the street food. So, of course, you have the product per se that, that, that is interesting and that is disruptive, but the packaging of the product, the story of the product uh, um, also adds a lot there. And more on the, um, on the taste and on the, the, on the fusion, it's this uh, Sainsbury's lamb, uh, Kafka and the uh, Tiki chips. Um, that, that is uh, quite interesting. And we see that even um, a category like chips, that's difficult to innovate. Um, uh, is trying to push the boundaries a little bit and go for uh, unexpected um, combinations. Um, so to, to summarize um, all, um, what does it require uh, from our perspective to build a, a successful private brand? Well, the first thing is that you need to define a coherent private brand strategy and you need to know uh, what is going to be the role of private brands, where you want to innovate. You also need to know your consumer and the market trends because this is what will allow you to be uh, powerful in innovation. Um, need to um, have a focus on consistent quality and um, new product development process. Um, we know that um, an, um, quality across categories is critical for private brands. This is a key differentiation point with national brands that are more, most of the time focused on one category. Um, the branding and design is also really important uh, for consumers to understand the brand. Uh, for instance, this little product uh, with the street food tells you all the story of, um, what, of the experience you're going to have. Um, and of course, um, the store experience is, is really important for consumers because if retailers are selling products, they are selling products in a store or in a digital store and the experience is really important. All this requires a lot of different competencies and so uh, it's important to have the right partners uh, to, 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 to build a successful private brand program uh, from the supplier um, to um, the partners. Uh, and that's, that's about it. Thank you very much. So thank you, Annie. Uh, questions queued up uh, as many as possible. Uh, now we will enable the audio of some of the participants uh, whose questions have been shortlisted and they will go first. If we have more time, we will take up more questions. So first to begin with, uh, Susanta uh, Bhattacharya. Uh, I will uh, enable your audio. Uh, please uh, go ahead and uh, ask your questions to Andy. Hi, Annie, can yeah. you hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah, and it was excellent. Uh, such a, you know, nice to hear from someone from the consumer inside and consumer centricity side of the story. Excellent. And uh, I have, a, you know, uh, I'll just give you a very uh, brief background if Raul, uh, if time permits two minutes. Uh, so, you know, uh, during 2009 and 10, I used to work in a private level environment in India as a you know, sourcing manager. At the time, the private level strategy was basically, you know, I'll go faster. Basically take the top three products in a you know, product line, the best, the medium one, and the common product. Then choose the biggest pie in that market, in that segment, and then, uh, you know, take that as a benchmark and try to, you know, imitate as per your packaging, as per your look and feel uh, to look like that product, you know? and uh, try to stay into that, uh, uh, you know, that layer of the product. Now, as you say, after a lot of, you know, um, consumer innovation and consumer centricity has come in now. 
as we can see people like you are advocating this now how whom do we uh, you know take benchmark as because when i see your entire you know uh, value chain we need a complete you know experience store experience then pairing and experience now uh, as a private level owner probably will not be able to get so much of consumer insight because it's expensive to start with how do we do a, you know what is the initial penetration strategy for a person like me who is trying to start a you know um, private level business to support to the modern trade or to the you know standard uh, standard grocery chains whom do we follow because it's a huge market what is the best apple what is the best uh, you know pie to catch and that's that's a really good um question um well first retailers have a lot of information i think they know even more on consumers than actually brands uh, because they are the ones selling so they know their consumers quite quite well or they have all the information to know their consumers and and from that moment on um, once they know that, when they know what they shop, and once they know who they want to be, which is really important in this case, it's not only about who you are right now, but it's about your strategy and your plan. I guess the benchmarks and um, what you're going to look at will come naturally. Um, and that's something we always do when we work with, with a retailer and we set his, um, his uh, private brand strategy. Naturally, having discussions with them, we are able to identify who we can, um, it, it's, it's not about um, um, following, it's really about getting inspired because each retailer um, is having a different reality. And so this will come naturally, but they have a lot of information with their, with, I mean, they have to consume, they have to save data that brands struggle to get from time to time. So looking at this, um, doing, um, setting the right private brand strategy, it, it, it normally comes, um, not easily, but it comes, uh, it's a lot of discussions, um, a lot of brainstorming. It's a lot of alignments to know really what is going to be the role of the retailer and what is the role, going to be the role of the private brand. And then it, this comes normally, um, quite fast. Yeah, makes sense. So it's more of a uh, like engagement with the retailer would be the right strategy. Yeah, yeah. It always starts with the strategy. If there's no strategy, it doesn't mean there's no. It doesn't mean that there is no private brands. But we cannot talk about uh, brands. We are really talking about um, um, generic solutions to shoppers. Thank you. Any other so, question? Yes, uh, so I will take Akshay Man Mangal's question. Uh, uh, Akshay, uh, good to go. Hi, and uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Yeah, so I had this question basically. Uh, so I, like, whatever little experience I have of the Indian market is that Indian buyers are very value conscious, like very price sensitive. Now, I have had this dilemma that suppose there is an established brand. Now, if you try and imitate the product, you may not be very cheap. Like you may get it five, seven percent cheaper, probably eight percent cheaper than the established brand. And if you differentiate or you you know try to little innovate or add some more features to your product, then your product becomes expensive. And it is very hard to convince people to buy your product over the established brand. How do you break this dilemma? Um, well, I'm not, I'm, uh, that's not really my uh, area of expertise to be, to be honest with you, uh, as I'm much more on the, on the trends and innovation than the, um, and the execution and the pricing. Um, so can you, can you repeat so that I get all the elements? It's like, suppose there's an established brand. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. It's yeah, a so suppose, yeah, there's an established brand. And if you try to imitate that product, like you want to do the same product and you do it a little cheaper, but you, because there aren't many, lot of margins. So probably you'll end up being cheaper by five, seven percent, eight percent, max 10 percent. You can't really be cheaper than that. Otherwise the quality will be too low. So people will yet stick to the established brand. And if you differentiate your product and try and add some new features or, you know, do some, some innovation in that, 
then your product tends to go a little more expensive. And it's very hard to sell that product in the market where there's already established where it's cheaper than you. So it kinds of become a circular dilemma that how do you sort this out? Um, that's a good question. Um, well, it's never about one isolated product. It's about a mix. Um, and and, and um, unless innovation is part of your DNA and shoppers come to your store because they know that you will have um, innovative products, it's really about the mix of products and having um, these products that are really about competing on price and these other products that are really about serving an, um, a specific consumer need. So um, once again, it comes back to the retailer strategy. If the retailer has um, the objective of um, of um, innovating on certain aspects and serving a specific consumer needs, it should come naturally. Um, but it's really also about um, the mix of the products and some products will have to be price aggressive to allow some other products to be less price aggressive. Max, does it answer your question? Yes, I... Sorry, we lost him. Hello. Yes, actually. So, yeah. yeah. So it, it sorry, uh, it got unmuted. It does answer, but but again, like you know, the point really comes down to like it all actually ends up being in the hands of the retailer that how he wants to position your private brand or your product. But really, is does the private brand has a hold in how they want to position themselves at the retailer through social media and stuff? Is that changing the way things work out? I can answer uh, here. Uh, you know. Uh, one, uh, times really become very competitive when it comes to uh, especially modern retail. Uh, so it's not just about the value of the price or the pricing. It's also about the differentiation in the product one. Two, I think retailers are today becoming very innovative in co-partnering with you, how you promote. So in markets like what NA actually operates in, which is London, you know, your European markets, you, you really see a lot of experiential opportunity coming to uh, young brands and private brands. Uh, so it's all about the right product and the right retail strategy, which will get you out of the, uh, off the way. And I, I think a, a differential, which you're referring to about five to 7% is actually a, a fairly good number uh, to start with. If you, if you have a, uh, if you have a strong product, I would say, um, and, and yes, absolutely. I think we've got a next panel, which is opening up. You'll, you'll have great discussions on that. Uh, where you would see how retailers are partnering with some innovative product folks uh, and uh, doing some very interesting work for, uh, for from a consumer standpoint. Thank you. So, time for maybe one last question. I'll just... Uh, yes, Shubham, go ahead. Yeah. Hello. Hi. Uh... So basically, my question is uh, around uh, private brands comes from uh, retailers who have their established uh, supply chain networks and maybe marketing side, everything is already sorted and people know about them. Let's say if there has to be a startup in consumer goods, which has no history or recall, how are they placed globally if you have any insights for, the, uh, for that as well? Um. Well, this, this will uh, always depend on um, the, the category, the market, um, the, the consumer you're targeting. So it always, I'm, I'm, I always give the same answer, I'm sorry. It always starts with, with, the, with the strategy um, because you can actually start with a private brand. And if we think on, if, if you think on retailers like Aldi and Lidl, I don't know if you're really familiar with them. Um, but these are almost exclusive retailers on private brands. Actually, national brand plays, they are more of a um, complementary offer than, than national brands. So on the conventional side, we always believe that private brand is a complement to national brand, but it doesn't mean it has to be. And it's, it's really about, um, about your strategy. And once the strategy is defined, uh, you, can, you can have from the beginning a strong private brand offer. You have to understand once again, who you want to be, what are your key um, strengths, uh, where you want to be known for, and, and this is where you can start with private brand. But it doesn't have to be an evolution of national brand. We have many retailers that are successful 
with a strong private brand program from the beginning. So thank you very much, Anne. We'll move to the, uh, so thank you for a very, very insightful session. Uh, you know, we all had a great uh, learning from you, your entire global perspective, you know, and, but, and the local perspective as well. So thank you very much once again. Uh, with this, uh, I would now like to, uh, so our, you know, I would like, I would now like to introduce the next panel and uh, which will uh, be for 45 minutes. Uh, so here. So I believe all the participants have joined. So can uh, all the panelists uh, enable their video and audio? Now it has been stopped by host. Yeah, I'll just one second. So can you all uh, now Enable your video. I still can't. I still can't. It says that the host has stopped it. This One is second. Alok. One second. I'm just enabling everybody's. Yeah. So now. Yeah. Well, are you going to fire? Going to fire or no? Or should we? Sorry. Start? Are you going to fire or should we start running as such? No, no. I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah we'll, we'll just start. We'll just uh, just give me a moment. Just. Yes, uh, so sort of let me just uh, introduce all of you and then probably you can take over. Yeah, so the panelists for this uh, session, uh, we have Mr. Harshwardhan Chauhan, who is the Vice President Marketing at Spencer's Retail and Omni Channel. Ms. Kenari Gosrani, who is an entrepreneur and strategist, Goma Group, Organaco. Uh, agro food and beverages, Trigo Foods, Ms. Pragati Kapoor, uh, brand and business head, private labels, pepperfry.com, Alok Kamath, director, Aero Pharma Group, uh, Saurabh Bora, senior director, own brands and, one second, Saurabh Bora, senior director, own brands, Grofers, and Ashutosh Taparia, regional business head, bigbasket.com. So Saurabh Bora uh, will actually moderate this session. So over to Saurabh. Yes. Saurabh? It seems over Rahul has got a habit of giving the toughest task to the simplest guy. <laughs> Hello to everyone. I believe uh, uh, what Anne had the audience is we have increased that count by 9 or 10 people. So that's good for us. <laughs> okay. And I hope they stay put. Uh, that is one. And I have got a very esteemed or a very young, I would say, very bubbly co-panelist with me from various sections of industry. There are entrepreneurs, there are uh, professionals from food, non-food. There are entrepreneurs from food, non-food, personal care. Uh, there is an e-grosser, there is an omni-channel and an offline partner who is there on board. So it's a very, uh, I would say I'm lucky that I'm having this kind of uh, co-panelist with me. So I would request that each one of you, if you want to give your short introduction in your language, although Rahul has already done your homework, 
Like we can start with Kennedy. Kennedy, what is good about you? Oh, Kennedy is on mute, I think. Yes, I'm sorry. We can hear uh, you. Can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. I'm a third generation entrepreneur. I've uh, taken the baton from my grandfather and father and joined the family business, which is uh, Goma Group, and uh, which was into manufacturing of process machines for dairy, beverages, oil and gas, and so on and so forth. And I'm also kind of taken this ahead. We've done a forward integration project where we have set up our own plant, and that is that's the project I'm basically handling, which is into private label. Uh, uh, co-packing and we have our own uh, brand which is called Strigo Foods and yeah we're into beverages carbonated and non carbonated so not that short but uh, yeah that's the intro hello Saurabh I think you're mute huh? yeah. can I do over to you me yeah yeah hi so I'm Priti. Uh, I uh, uh, manage the private labels at Pepper Fry. Uh, so I've been associated with them for about uh, five years now. And I, I'm a designer, but uh, eventually moved on to the business and brand side of uh, the private labels, uh, which was very unknown to me in the beginning. Uh, but it's been a good journey and I'm looking forward to this session. Nice. So, Prakriti has been with, uh, I believe, uh, furniture, furnishing, etc. in her yes. uh, career, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, yeah. Offliner yeah. amongst us, Harsh. Hi, everybody. Uh, this is Harshwardhan Chauhan. Uh, I'm currently uh, leading Spencer's Retail and Omni Channel alongside the Nature's Baskets portfolio as uh, Vice President for Marketing and Omni Channel. Prior to this, I'd been uh, uh, leading DLF shopping malls uh, across the country as central head of marketing and digital transformation there. Uh, uh, prior to that, was involved and instrumental in uh, building India's fifth biggest, largest e-commerce company, shopclues.com, uh, as director in the business head there. And prior to that, had been with Kodrij, ITC, Accenture, uh, and Racket uh, briefly during my career. Thanks, sir. Now the UT man. Shalok Kamal. Shalok, all yours. Good afternoon, good afternoon, everyone. Um, we basically belong to a group called Aeropharma. It's been into contract manufacturing of personal care and cosmetics um, since 1985. Uh, second generation, uh, trying my best to kind of get into the world of uh, private label and understanding then, doing opportunities where, wherever OEM is more of a uh, solution. So. I hope this is going to be a great session. Thanks, Saurav, for hosting it and taking the time for doing this. The Ecom Master Blaster, Mr. Tapadia. Yeah, hi. Hello, everyone. Uh, myself, Ashutosh Tapadia. I work with BigBasket.com. I've been heading their business uh, for Mumbai region since about three years. I joined Big Basket close to five years back. Uh, I launched what we were calling at that point of time as the Big Basket Express delivery business. And uh, I, I took over from my boss as the business head around three years back. Um, what's good about me is what, you know, sort of asked earlier, right? Tell me what's good about you. I think I, I, I'm extremely lucky and my luck passes on to the people who are around me. So this time also I'm lucky to be part of a company who is getting an opportunity to help people in the tough COVID times. And I hope my luck keeps passing on to people. Great. Thank you, Ashtosh. And guys, this is Saurabh and this is Saurabh the Bohra. That's all I am. Okay, a simple trader, a retailer for 16 years. And good thing about me is I love humor and I love talking to people like you. Okay. ka time apne paas hai, and it will be English, Hindi, English. Right? I hope everybody is comfortable, right? Shalom. Perfect. Mindas. So who wants to be on the firing line first? So it's going to be a Q and a, a more of an interactive session. Uh, of course, interactive sessions amongst five, six of us, and then uh, it will be short, I believe. And then we all will come to you guys to get Roger, of course, to 120 odd people. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wait for us till that time. Yeah, Harsh. So, why Harsh? Because I've been an offliner for 15, five, uh, firstly, why Harsh? I've been an offliner for like 14 odd years. Uske baad mein do saal, say I'm in online, right? So, Harsh, what do you think 
how challenging is to acquire the customer using own brands or challenger brands i'll uh, guys i'll be using this challenger brand uh, term quite often so challenger brand are those which were mentioned like uh, by somebody in the previous session like regional brands or chotu brands who come in the market okay so harsh kitna difficult hai to acquire customers using retailer brand and challenger brand for offliner so let me tell you my answer for this uh, saurav would have been really different post pre covid times i think uh, the covid times have given unprecedented learning uh, not just to private labels challenger brands manufacturers but even to retailers across the board i think and all owes to the uh, a massive shift that has happened into the in the consumer demographics per se and there are four major drivers uh, which which i need to put forth uh, if you look through covid times the consumers have totally uh, uh, gone away from what is usually called the brand stickiness uh, which they used to have for a whole lot of products uh, in fact their entire consumption cycle has moved towards uh, more healthier uh, immunity uh, and hygiene kind of products across the board whether it is staples cleaning personal care fmcg etc they are more open to now trying out brands which are more functional and more specifically which are more available and accessible to them in these times of needs i think there have no be, uh, there has not been any better time for challenger brands uh, or private brands to build a very robust business case uh, across the country and 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 uh, without quoting any examples per se uh let me tell you uh, at spencers retail we have been privy to a lot of brands regional ones uh, 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 and private labels who have done much better in terms of what we call as faster and and that's that's a six word code we have formulated at spencers retail to uh, uh, basically rate the response of brands uh, in these times of need uh, so especially brands who have been able to be very frugal in finance and uh, do a turn in their supply chain have been very agile in thinking uh, like for example bring out new products which are more functional uh, across the board uh, uh, private brands who have really spruced up this chain which is the s of supply chain and uh, people who have been very tactful in managing the workforce and talent management across the board while being within the ambit of regulatory and compliance uh, they have certainly given a big fight to the national biggies in in the brands uh, purview so i think uh, covid times have brought in a newer level of personalization or relevance that the regional private or challenger brands have built in into the consumer uh, uh, basket size now uh, and and this uh, phenomenon i believe will uh, further go on uh, uh, consumers are right now not finicky about consuming a particular brand but essentially the brands which are more available and accessible and who are able to keep the promise of trust and hygiene uh, those simple uh, uh, trust promises are are able to fare well so i think uh, uh, it, uh, it the pre covid times anybody would have said that the uh, way of building a private label essentially is gross margins profitability and 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 giving a very price competitive kind of uh, scenario there uh, uh, to to uh, basically increase the penetration across the board but i think right now more important variables of relevance trust and hygiene are coming into play you know what uh, what you have opened a pandora box here now kinnari and alok are going to increase their margins while negotiating with us retailers <laughs> <laughs> okay so no sir uh, absolutely i think i think uh, more than the margins i think uh, it's more from a consumer standpoint consumers in covid times have been foregoing to a large extent to brands on account of pricing and margins but what mm-hmm. they really want is the brands to be available the brands to solve for real consumer problems of supply chain as consumers now are work from home and stay at home i think it's the responsibility of brands both national brands and private labels to reach out to the consumers and hence we are seeing more innovative models of doorstep deliveries uh, which have not just been adopted by the earlier e-commerce players but new omni channel players who or private labels who are uh, developing omni channel reach to uh, get a newer uh, product penetration so i think uh, it's it's a whole lot of things uh, and a newer uh, uh, gamut that has opened up for private labels now cool so ashtosh harsh ne jo kaha wo it's more or less precisely it's it's talk of sound these days right in board rooms and on in uh, in telecalls and video calls everywhere we are seeing that 
consumer is uh, behaving this way that way uh, there is a research somewhere i would have read that usually a consumer takes one third of the time in deciding a product online than what it what he or she does offline so on the product land, landing pages on a app or on web how do you think uh, does your internal research shows that how a consumer interacts with private label is there any research finding around it so uh, very interesting sort of uh, I, i will uh, take this five year journey that i've had with big basket okay so when we started uh, i launched express and at that point of time uh, the space was actually crowded in terms of number of players but most of them were small right so obviously you were there but you know we had local banya who is now no longer there we have pepper fry pepper uh, no, not pepper fry sorry pepper tap zop now and so many frankly i don't even remember so Suddenly, Pragati had a smile on her face. <laughs> so obviously, times have have changed a bit. At that point of time, we used to have seventy two percent of our traffic coming from web. Okay, and we used to our entire value chain was built around web in terms of how we advertise, how we give sponsored ads, and so on, right? Because web was the primary way of consumption, and then. there was already a, a wave happening of people trying to move close to apps and you know with geo coming in it literally shoved the wave in and now we literally it's not ulta it's even worse now 82% of all our sales happen via app so now website is you know is hardly anything right? yeah redundant right and uh, especially for things like me right me uh, our products are more of general usage monthly consumption regular buying and so on right so people know what they want to buy one good advantage was app made it much more accessible it became easier for to acquire customers very easy for people to order and so on the so called uh, unattended baskets and left carts actually reduced people started shopping more earlier people used to build their carts over a week so they literally start shopping on saturday and check out on friday now nothing people just travel back from their offices at 7 pm place an order till 8 o'clock and get a delivery tomorrow right so this all these good things have happened by moving to an app the biggest problem that has happened for us is the time taken so on an average at that point of time if i can share a number 21 minutes was what it was taken to place one order on an average not that number is 6 and a half minutes and even that number if you guys think from your shopping behavior might actually look very high because we actually shop much faster the only reason why this number goes up is people still build their carts over two or three sessions so i add four products then come back later after and add four more products especially for grocery but from a 20 minutes to a 6 minutes the time spent on the channel interacting itself has gone down it has had a huge impact on our abvs and abqs specifically right the average quantities were going down which is why we had to adopt an app strategy and trying to you know make it simpler uh, the product landing page which they are talking about people doesn't don't even go there you know uh, most of them at least so we had an interesting uh, insight when you know amazon were trying to you know go much more gung ho on their groceries and they had things called product reviews and all which you and i uh, initially we didn't have because everyone knows ashirwad data right what would you rate ashirwad data for that was our logic so uh, we did not have that concept and Uh, suddenly, obviously, when we have large discussions, people have to sound smart. So I also have to give something. I say, let's have this. Yeah, this Gophers have, and this Amazon has. I don't have. So let's have this rating and all. And my founder said, let's just first evaluate who who goes to that page. So there is obviously a search page. Sixty-two percent of the shopping happens to the search page itself, right? So people search, order, come to them. Then people go to that at least search list. and obviously you know like the saying goes if you want to hide a dead body hide it on the second page of google search no one will go there right first page chat koi jata nahi so similarly when a product search also people buy from the search page does agreement actually go to the product page was a thing which we said and only 6% actually went till the pd page yeah. and so all the effort that we take this gyan ye wo made with aromatic compounds and whatever it's nonsense right no one reads that people know their brands and this was the biggest hindrance i feel was for a say a pl to come in and give that experience compared to a, a physical store wherein the packaging can communicate that experience right so i i think the question which you asked harsh sir was uh, is how difficult it is or does anyone come to uh, online for private label i'm saying answer is no and we cannot build a business from on uh, from private labels in online but i'm saying how does it matter right it's not how much you can make a business from as much as how much can you sustain and private labels are the future because they are the key cornerstone for having sustainability right they are the 
they are the ones who will give us margin, will give us a differentiated products, will help us create niches, right? So for example, obviously me and you approach niches in a different manner. For, for example, you would say a price point niche is still a niche, right? And we create a product there. So same product at a different price point or at a competitive price point is a niche. And it's a lovely way to do, right? I might say that, you know, people have health snacks. People don't have, say, a ragi sticks. I will go to the ragi sticks, right? A branded ragi sticks and so on. So people will choose their niches and private label is the way to go. So private label will not bring you the business, but it will ensure that you stay in business. And right now, COVID time is the time to take it forward because uh, I think somehow brands have been reduced to a commodity. And by commodity, I'm not saying that all Atta is the same, right? But obviously not all biscuits are the same. But within say bourbon, I might become more ambivalent towards trying a, a relatively unknown bourbon than a Britannia on a Parley bourbon because of these times. And trial brings customers. So if I can ensure people try my product, people will come back to me and private label trials have gone through the roof. And I'm sure you also agree to that. And which is, these are the best times to be here. Uh, just ensure that we reach the customer and you know, world will take care of itself. Thanks Ashutosh for the second nail in our uh, coffin. Alok <laughs> and Kennery uh, have been hearing it out. Uh, margin banane ki soch rahe. Chalo, let's also make it. Very nice. Okay. So Hush, back to you. Very short. Uh, what is the expectation of a consumer from a private label product? Very precise. If I what, very... Is it price? Is it quality? Is it packaging? Is it convenience? No, no. Let me let me just simplify it for everybody. I think first and foremost is availability. Uh, one thing that most private brands lose on in the long term is ensuring that they uh, not solve for the long term availability and consistent uh, uh, showcase on the shelves across the board. So if if your private label is not on the shelf and if you don't show up, I think you uh, the private brands lose out on a major. Uh, opportunity to create that long-term recall. I think availability stands first. And more than the pricing, let me put quality first. I think uh, uh, COVID times have opened up an unprecedented opportunity where, as, as Ashutosh has told in, and a lot of people uh, within the business know, the trials have gone up massively, especially for private brands. Uh, consumers have been forgiving in, in the sense that they are no longer finicky about their choice basket. In fact, they've become more functional. And uh, if a private brand, apart from being available, has been great on quality, I think then they, they are set for long term. So this, this is an up curve where uh, 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 the uh, uh, opportunity to increase the penetration of uh, private labels has come in once once uh, in a lifetime. I, I, I must say that uh, otherwise it would have been the regular uh, uh, price margin competition and, and, and the competition for uh, uh, saying that uh, can I have more shelf space to grow my business. But I think more than the shelf space, uh, it's uh, about the need space which private brands are right now solving. So I think just put uh, two together, availability and quality, that's all for now. Okay. Uh, to everyone on my panel, uh, uh, to the sellers, to the retailers, to the sourcing guys, okay, uh, Prakati is a sourcing person, I believe. Okay. Uh, uh, we private level guys, we often face a big challenge. Uh, I would expect Ashtosh to answer that. Okay, Ashtosh, the internal stakeholders, the category managers, okay, uh, operations managers, marketing managers, how do these guys they uh, perceive private label as? Unke idzat kya hoti hai private label ko unke dimag mein? Do they have any any respect for private label over there? How is it? So, uh, uh, frankly, in in my, in my company too, we have a a, a separate uh, you know uh, a chain which handles our private labels, right? In terms of the category and the brands, and I I clearly see that constant fight between him and the category person. Saying ki yaar, tera biscuit kaun khayega? Is rupee mein pachhatar gram to Britannia deta hai good day. Answer, answer, answer. After that, baad fir hoyi aata hai ki the consumer is the king, right? We need to ensure that the trials happen. The only thing that we can ensure is to give them a, a, a the same platform and same standing. And once we do that, you know, remove the hindrances. After that, obviously, the better product prevails. And we have also had, you know, uh, people choose value, right? That value can be created by a lesser price for the same product or more quality or more perceived experience from the same price, right? Yeah. So that the customer can decide. 
right? And I think we should not try to deep dive in saying what the customer wants because frankly, I think customer doesn't know what he wants, right? Everyone wants separate things. I think we should give our offering, put it out there, be vulnerable. अगर कोई मिल गया तो अच्छी बात जब भी हम एक कंपनी में काम करेंगे तब आप ऑप्शन होंगे मैं कैटेगरी में बात करूंगी ओके सो इट हैज बीन मोर डिफिकल्ट कैटेगरी इजिएस्ट कैटेगरी एज फार एज प्राइवेटेबल इज कंसर्न प्रगति कैन से यस और नो 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 सो एंड प्रोबेबली आई वुड से एंड द मोस्ट डिफिकल्ट पार्ट इन करंट एरा एंड इन फ्यूचरिस्टिक एरा टू सोर्स द प्रोडक्ट pertaining to private label right so, yeah. to you uh, how does the market pie look like uh, in furnishing or furniture as a segment uh, private label vis a vis branded segment so what uh, is the share of private label in furnitures in india if you can uh, so uh, if i were to talk about private label and uh, the rest of the market i would kind of uh, segregate it as organized and unorganized because uh, what falls under private label today is something that can be termed as organized and the rest is all unorganized which is about just uh, organized just about 15% of the market uh, but it's growing uh, like the popularity of the private labels is uh, growing people Uh, so from what i understand uh, at least uh, on pepper fry we have an equal share of private label versus uh, the market places uh, which are again private labels but smaller in uh, scale etc so uh, there is equal opportunity which uh, stands for both uh, private labels and uh, the the market place uh, the only difference being that uh the private labels have a very high chance of uh, uh kind of uh, being uh, being found uh because they are being uh, advertised or they are being marketed in a certain way so uh they, they, their share is uh, definitely going to increase over the coming uh, uh period of time so currently it is much smaller in scale as compared to the unorganized uh, market and uh, i believe most of your sourcing would be happening from international market if i'm not wrong for uh, private not part. not really what, so, so what would be the share like uh, uh, so our imports for private labels uh, is just about uh, 15% oh, okay uh, the rest of it is uh, sourced locally also the uh, the idea behind sourcing is also to source local as much as we can because uh, uh there are uh, if you know that there are the duty structures from uh, all the countries which are non afta they are very high so uh, uh, this becomes a challenge plus uh, from uh, countries like china and brazil etc the volumes have to be really high so that becomes a roadblock so hence uh, we kind of promote making in india uh, and uh, local sourcing more than uh, procuring internationally So thanks to Pragati, I would say that at least my state has got a lot of uh, entrepreneurs built up, like Rajasthan. So Barmer and yeah. Jodhpur is full of uh, yes. <laughs> every lane is flourishing with the products to be sold on paper fry and uh, urban ladder, right? Jodhpur actually happens to be one of the biggest exporters of uh, solid wood furniture and also local uh, for local supply in India. So, so Alok has been dozing off. So let's go to him directly. <laughs> हेलो उठिए गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग सो हेलो व्हाट इज दिस मैक्सिमा मैक्सिमा यू हैव बीन टॉकिंग अबाउट सिंस लास्ट व्हाट 4 5 मंथ्स आई हैव बीन हियरिंग व्हाट इज इट ऑल अबाउट यार हाउ मैक्सिम इज इट मैक्सिमा सो मैक्सिमा सॉल्यूशन इज बेसिकली अ फर्म व्हिच इज फोकसिंग मोर ऑन ओईएम प्राइवेट लेबल एंड आल्सो अ सॉल्यूशन प्रोवाइडिंग रादर देन अ प्रोडक्ट सो our entire focus is mainly working on understanding the consumers uh, and co- consumers for me is a b2b market so it's more understanding the brands whether they are uh, online offline uh, startup brands uh, luckily we've been able to work with many brands in india who've been able to uh, who have the passion of understanding the market uh, they exactly knew what they want and uh, thereafter they came to us with uh, with the idea Uh, they just needed a hand holding in terms of putting that idea on a piece of paper and then from there after we took it further for him the for that paper idea to be converted into an actual product 
uh, and that's what Maxima is all about. Um, is it Nachal? Sorry. So, who's your who's your oldest and the largest buyer, and who would be the youngest uh, startup that you have helped out? So. Oldest in the uh, oldest buyer has been Himalaya. Of course, they, it it has nothing to do with Maxima Solution. That has been a as an OEM, but it's more of a contract manufacturing partner. But for us, to, uh, there is an. I mean, I, I'm sure Kinnery or probably Pragati would be aware. There's a brand called FAE, uh, which recently launched in India, uh, which is free and equal. So there was a young girl came across um, to our office and wanted to kind of um, had an idea to do something, which is. Uh, color cosmetics was her main forte that she wanted to uh, launch a product in and uh, today she's been uh, she has launched with only one product five SKUs uh, and covered by most of the big magazines covered by most of the good uh, uh, online uh, uh, selling partners and the other uh, small brand now become big is Bombay Shaving Company so that was also uh, one of our so I remember Ashutosh, the owner of Bombay Shaving Company, came to us four years back with one product that he wanted. So from one SKU to 32 SKUs today is what we have been able to be a part of their growth. Yes. Very nice. So over to Kinneri, the relay premier, uh, <laughs> if I would like to relay premier, because generation to generation, she has been in the, their family has been uh, on an entrepreneur uh, track. So, can I, uh, a question to you is uh, a, a pretty, I would say, a pretty simple question, not a complicated one, of course. Uh, why entrepreneur? Why entrepreneur? Uh, to be very honest, uh, business discussions and new ideas and talking to new, because we supply process machinery, process machinery to other entrepreneurs, uh, it's been a dining room conversation for all of us since since I was a kid. I've been uh, going to office, uh, which was the only place I was allowed to go in my summer vacation since my 10th grade. And uh, that's how the seed was put in. I've worked in KPMG for a while. I've uh, studied, ch pursued chartered accountancy. And then I eventually went into family managed business. And I've always had this seed that uh, it's not something, I, I don't want to, I've always wanted to start something of my own or along as a part of the family business. And uh, yeah, I didn't know, we didn't, I mean, we've never had, we've never been molded to work under someone. I, that's the best way to put it. So that's why this. Oh. What is organic or beverages all about? So basically what we, uh, it started off as in, it's, uh, it started off as a product of Goma, uh, we manufacture process machinery for the dairy and the beverage industry. And since the past 35 years, we've had knowledge in liquid food processing. So what we did is we set up our own uh, plant under Organic Beverages and Private, uh, uh, Agri-Foods and Beverages Private Limited. And wherein we manufacture uh, carbonated and non-carbonated beverages for uh, uh, a lot of our customers. So the whole idea was uh, people used to come to us to set up uh, plants. A lot of time customers were not sure how uh, the market was going to respond to their product. So we really thought of bringing in this value addition uh, wherein Organico would act as, uh, would help them say in product development also, ensuring they're following the right processes, help them, basically everything is, uh, from bench to shelf. Shelf part is obviously their uh, purview, uh, is under their purview. But we provided hand-holding support uh, a good, great partnership. That was the whole idea uh, of this. And we've worked with a few, few young brands as well, uh, especially mm -hmm. startups. Uh, if you've heard of Potion, uh, functional drink, no, beverage. Potion, I've heard of. Yes, yes. So we work with, uh, that's one of the young brands and very aggressive uh, brand that I've worked with. And yeah, and we've, 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 been, we've been launched our own uh, uh, beverage brand, but mostly for the local market where like, I think one of the things that we've seen is um, like Fresca, there is uh, Jiru, there is Dawat, and all these companies. I mean, although they are local, they're giving a tough time to big national brands. And uh, like with private labeling and private brands and these local brands, I feel there is a shift or there's a trend being seen in the market. 
So what is your message? You have been dealing with mostly like raw material of yours is fresh, right? Unlike Alok. Okay. <laughs> Alok is mostly dealing in chemicals and... Uh, uh, yeah. So salt. we use uh, so, okay, no, fresh... No, just, just a second. Sorry to interview. So there yeah. are a lot of buyers sitting out there amongst those hundred odd people who would uh-huh. be talking to you. You need to elaborate what are the challenges that you face when you source the raw material, you process it, you bottle mm-hmm. it, you label it, and those guys are sitting in your office commanding or demanding the prices, returns, and freshness of the produce from you. So you need to teach those guys a lesson. Yeah, tum log kya chate ho life mein? Hum kitna pain fan karte hai. I am also a buyer by the way. Saurabh, Saurabh, tu bhi hoi hai yaar. See, I, I won't go too much in detail. I mean, that is something that differs from customers. There, there are customers who want like, who come to us because of the hygiene that we have at our plant. Okay. You, there, are, there are a lot of these small players who will do packing and uh, private labeling for you. But a very few plants that try and maintain hygiene standards or have FSSC 22,000 and so on and so forth. And we're really working and we've really worked hard to ensure that. And mainly what the thing is now considering this whole COVID situation, I really feel uh, consumers may want to opt for brands and if they promote that, like even Harshavardhan pointed out, for brands that uh, keep hygiene in mind, who uh, manufacture in a safe uh, manner, in clean manner, clean products, contactless products. And that's where I think things should move, would move, may move. So... Yeah, I mean, I think we're trying to maintain that. And if that generally tends to cost a premium, which uh, buyers like you are like uh, (laughs) uh, negotiating on and so on and so forth. And the best part about uh, us is like our plant is very close to Mumbai. So there is accessibility uh, as well. So Ashutosh, I'm going to contact you and uh, let's see if you can work something out. Uh, Let me just give you one liner about Pekinari. Let me just give you one liner about buyers. We all are from Bombay. All of six mm-hmm. of us, right? We all have to buy one BHK, and we need three BHK. That's what I know. Of course, of course, of course. Value for money. I think everyone always, including Indian consumers, all are looking for value for money. And if, and if as a, a, a supplier or as a seller, you're not able to provide that, uh, you're not going to go anywhere. Ashutosh, what do you think about vendors, OEMs? What do you think? You have got some good feelings about them. Good feelings? Right. So, uh, I might get into some soup here. So, it's a risky area. I need to tread carefully. But, but on, a, on a very serious note, when we talk about small brands, region brands, it is valid until it doesn't get bigger. Right. So I started my career with ITC, right? And uh, I was in Bihar when we launched hippie noodles is what they called it. We called it hippie noodles. Pe bol nahi paate the Bihar mein log se. So, uh, and they were like, ki, ka, naam rakhe ho aap? hippie, hippie, koi bol hi I said, I remember very clearly, you know, at that time we had this bingo and uh, uh, in West, so, uh, so obviously Lays was the biggest competitor, right? But in West, it was all Balaji. Obviously, it started from Gujarat, but from Gujarat right up till Kolapur, you will only find Balaji, right? Oh, yes. Now the question is, is Balaji a private label or a regional player or what? Yes. He was that maybe at some point of time, till the time people realize that value, right? Ki this guy gives me value for money. The chips are good. They are consistent in quality and they are at the right price for me. And baki sub set up, karpa hai, right? So I think it's difficult to get into. Foot in the door is always difficult, right? So we, even for big brands, obviously they were small at that point of time. Uh, we should not dismiss anyone. At the same time, good quality prevails. And by good quality, it's not an absolute quality, right? The best is not be bought at 100 rupees a chip, right? The uh, most expensive water might not sell. It's quality for money, which Kenry is also saying, right? And I think everyone can carve their niche because the market is so huge. And I personally feel with the whole export bans, import bans and issues, India is very well placed because our consumption is global, right? Wo, uh, Modi ji ke hai, wo jab khana mangenge, to se khayenge, right? Bed, 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 and we are very well placed because our consumption is internal, is online. And I think we, these are very good times to, you know, be positive and think about how to capture them. 
So, Alok, can can you give me to give me two percent from your turnover with uh, Mr. Tapadia? <laughs> I have got. You should also give me. He is asking for. He is asking for better quality <laughs> and he is ready to pay higher prices. So, please make sure when the deal closes, you call me. Yeah, Pragati, what do you feel yeah. about OEMs? How how difficult? What challenges do you face face when you interact with contract manufacturers? Yeah, as a buyer, as a buyer. Yeah, I think uh, the two things that we are talking about are very, very different. So I cannot sometimes relate with the things that Ashutosh is talking about because those are like essentials. You need food. But on the other hand, uh, what I deal with day in day out is sort of a non-essential kind of a product. So the demand or the precisely, precisely whatever you are going to say, whatever you are facing with respect to the product which you are having, like no returns, damages, uh, uh, passion which moves on. Are you working in a similar kind of? Uh, Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, basically, the kind of OEMs that we deal with uh, is uh, is also uh, brands which already have their own presence. They are very small in nature, but uh, they are also manufacturing their own uh, products and kind of trying to establish their own private labels at some point of time. So, um, we the kind of challenge that we face is uh, that uh, it is very relationship based because. Uh, it's not like you give us a good price and we will uh, we will give you an uh, give you an order for 1000 uh, products or whatever you have to build that relationship uh, over a period of time and uh, then uh, build that trust with the oem to give us the right quality the right differentiations and uh, kind of exclusivity that uh, a business like uh, furniture or furnishings require so it is a long term process it's not just Driven by pricing or quality, it's a lot of things. <coughs> it is, um, yeah. like I said, it's like uh, you have to build that relationship uh, with the supplier. Uh, you have to assure them that uh, your products are going to sell, uh, and uh, it in no ways harms or kinds of uh, put keep keeps their brand on a back foot. So. so that is very important uh, in a, a business uh, which is not as fast moving as a, an essential sort of a product so uh, that i think is very very important uh, in uh, this kind of uh, an environment alok uh, what is your view about buyers how do you look at them i have asked you the same question during simple also so <laughs> just wanted to check kya kya hai aapko buyers ke bare mein no no when I, when you are in such panel discussions उसका बात नहीं कर रहा हूं अच्छा व्हेन यू आर लाइंग ऑन योर बेड व्हेन यू आर सिटिंग इन योर सोफा व्हेन यू आर व्हेन यू आर थिंकिंग पोस्ट नेगोशिएशन डिस्कशन हैज हैपेंड उसके बाद में आपके मन में बायर्स के बारे में क्या ख्याल आते हैं इसको कैसे हैंडल करे बाबा धंधा <laughs> करना है अ uh, <laughs> कैसे हैंडल करे इज द बिगेस्ट चैलेंज एंड दैट्स अ कॉमन फीलिंग या एंड अम more than anything else i think it's a it's a kick that you get because uh, at one end it's not only uh, the owner of the business or the hod of the business it's the business which is down the line has to go and understand that i need to do this for this buyer yeah. so so my uh, my fight is usually when i sit on the pot more than the bed and this is when i keep <laughs> thinking how do i make sure that this is being translated to my team so that it's not like a it's not a compulsion to deal with this buyer but it's a vision to deal with this buyer and come to a mutual consent very nice so alok maine na 25 saal pehle koi phrase banaya tha aur kisi se suna tha alok has made it true today don't constipate your ideas keep them out you you give me examples of bed and sofa i thought the reality is somewhere else it's <laughs> very nice so i guess i've answered yeah yeah Can you? What do you think about buyers? One liner. What do you Me? think about buyers? One liner. One liner. Uh, good when we crack the deal. Hmm. Uh, sorry. Basically, I don't know. Like buyers are some people. They are customers. I mean, they have their own thought process at times, and sometimes this is where they are, and this is where they want to go. So it's uh, you have to be the bridge in between for them. and uh, i found a, I've, i've actually come across a lot of uh, customers uh, who come to us and are very clueless and 
एंड दे हैव दिस बिग दिस इज वन कस्टमर केम टू मी मुझे कार्बोनेटेड बेवरेजेस लॉन्च करना है मुझे फ्रूट बेवरेजेस लॉन्च करनी है मुझे कोकोनट वाटर भी लॉन्च करना है मुझे सब लॉन्च करना है बट द फर्स्ट ओनली थिंग आई आस आई मीन ओनली थिंग आस एम सर आपके पास मार्केटिंग स्ट्रेटेजी रेडी है यू नोट बिफोर यू वॉन्ट स्टार्ट ऑल ऑफ दीज थिंग्स हाँ वो फिगर आउट कर लेंगे बट इसको कैसे करना है The whole point is that a lot of these consumers are uh, very clueless, and you have to act as a bridge. Consumer is king, but you basically have to act as a bridge as to from where they are and where they want to go. I mean, that's at least for as as co-packers and private labelers and partners. That is what I see. Well, actually, one question I am asking you is that there is Rahul is also there. Hi, Rahul. Good morning. Okay, so. आप सभी से रिटेलर से सवाल है और प्राइवेट लेबल जो बनाते हैं कॉन्ट्रैक्ट मैनुफैक्चरर्स क्वेश्चन गोस टू ऑल ऑफ देम हैव यू गाइस बोथ द पार्टीज हैव यू गाइस एवर थॉट ऑफ पुटिंग योरसेल्फ इन अदर गाइस शूज यार उसका धंधा सीखते हैं उसके क्या चैलेंजेस हैं कभी ओईएमस ने ये सोचा है कि लेट्स गो टू ऑन द साइड ऑफ बायर्स व्हाट काइंड ऑफ प्रेशर डू दे फील विद इन देयर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन What are their deliverables to their consumers and to their KRAs? कभी ऐसा सोचा है लाला छोड़ लाला पंती छोड़ के वो सैलराइड क्लास होने की कभी हिम्मत की और आप लोगों ने कभी सैलराइड क्लास होके लाला पंती सोचने की कोशिश की है? So we are kind of doing that in a way. Uh, yeah. Sort of. I said we are kind of doing that wherein we are. Uh, we are also venturing out in the market and trying to figure out figure things out for our own uh, brand on a very small scale so there are some problems that we have faced which we understand and we preemptively share with our uh, to be potential customers and they really appreciate it and that becomes a sort of a value addition uh to our consumers that i can i mean uh my experience in selling private uh, our, our own products under trigo foods has helped a uh, lot of these other potential customers that come to me uh i mean yeah i mean that helps cool for me i mean yeah, for me yeah. uh, it's been a little different we as a group have been very clear that we are not wanting to go into our own uh brand of any of the products that we do for any other brand so that gives us a very clear understanding but uh, about 10 years back there was a opportunity where i diverged into uh licensing business so where my forte was manufacturing of personal care products and cosmetics uh how could i understand the market was by taking the license of uh, the brands which is mattel toys which is barbie and hot wheels and that basically uh, is a completely non uh, i would say competing products with my existing brand owners that i work for uh and that also is given me a, a 10 years of understanding of how the market operates so sometimes when a when a brand owner uh, whether it is a private label or a uh uh a, a startup comes to us they generally uh, have the same problems in fact they also ask us like what kinari has mentioned they also ask us sir you know you know we do a general backward mathematics for them as to x factory is to this aap itne mein bech sakte ho aapki margin itni ho sakti hai exactly that gives them that gives them some confidence that ha chalo these people are also understanding the nitty gritties that goes behind selling a product and also they are clear that as a company we are not going to be ever coming in that category with our own brand so that gives them a little bit of a confidence yeah i agree with you uh, that it is important that you don't uh, clash with uh, your products don't clash with uh, who uh, who are your co-packing or private labeling customers usually i mean they should avoid it yeah. that shouldn't be avoided 100% Cool. So, guys, if, uh, nothing else is there. Let's go to the guys who are uh, uh, waiting to pounce on us. <laughs> okay. Sure. Uh, Rahul, uh, let's open the session for Q and A. Yes. So, let me. So, we've got some questions queued up. Uh, let me first uh, unmute Saurav Jain. He will ask his first question. Saurav, over to you. सौरभ उनको अनम्यूट करना पड़ेगा कैन यू हियर सौरभ अनम्यूट कर दिया है अच्छा नहीं ही इज आई बिलीव ही इज नॉट अराउंड सो वी कैन गो टू नेक्स्ट वन सेकंड 
Saurabh, are you there? Can you hear us? Let's take the next let's, question. Let's take the next question if it's possible. Or you could you could uh, ask the Saurabh's question and you know let's get him answer. Yeah. Saurabh uh, has this very interesting question and Saurabh Jain from Decora. My company is into contract manufacturing of furniture. What is the right furniture category to start selling online or to start as private label OEM? So I think this is a very uh, pertinent question, very relevant question for Kagati yeah. to take up. But uh, is he available to uh, kind of... Uh... Receive the answer. Yeah, yeah, yes, he's there. Okay. Yes, okay. he's online. Uh, is he okay? All right. So uh, uh, I don't exactly know what uh, he is uh, into the manufacturing of, but uh, furniture it uh, probably doesn't seem like, but is a very vast category. Uh, depending on what you have expertise in manufacturing, for example. Uh, do you have the expertise to make panel wood or solid wood or uh, small items? It depends a lot on what you can do and then explore. Uh, so basically, if you go and look online, there is all sorts of uh, furniture, decor, home products being sold. So there is not one particular category I can point out unless you tell me what uh, what is the kind of expertise that you hold or what is your uh, uh, manufacturing uh, sort of unit like and uh, what is the capacity because it's it's very vast it might not seem like but it's very vast uh, it requires uh, so if you are for, for example if you have a sofa manufacturing unit the kind of labor uh, or the kind of expertise in uh, manufacturing that you would need would be very very different from if you're uh, making panel wood furniture so it's very important to first find your niche uh, see if there is enough support for you uh, to uh, expand that and then bring it on to any uh, channel. It could be e-commerce, it could be through retail or any other channel. Uh, but first, I think it's important to identify and uh, figure out what your expertise and, uh, lies in, what is the kind of infrastructure and the support that you can uh, kind of bring in uh, to build that. So if I knew a little bit more about what he's into, I could uh, probably answer it uh, more in detail for him. Sure, we'll, we'll, we'll I, try I and connect. I yeah. contract manufacturing of furniture, furniture and all. So decor. Oh, so again, uh, so de decor. exactly. So, so my point is that uh, furniture. Of the car. Yeah. Um, if it is solid wood, it's a completely. So if it's solid wood, you could probably go for beds or uh, uh, dining sets. If it's panel wood, there's like you can practically make anything and everything out of panel wood. Decor again, uh, there are Broad decorations, wall shelves. So it's it's very vast. It's difficult to pinpoint uh, sort of one particular product. And uh, if you were to launch your own uh, private label or work for a private label, you have to identify their needs and see what they're kind of uh, trying to uh, build. So so yeah, I hope yeah that answers this question. Sure, thank you. Thanks. Thanks. For there's one Mr. Mahavir Shah, I believe, who wanted to ask something. Mahavir, are you there? Yes, I'm here. I can see he's catching on the whiteboard. Yeah. Uh, yes, by the way, my name is Mahavir and I uh, own a brand called Zenveda. And it's uh, really an honor to see all of you, uh, either your companies or either your uh, patterns of business. Achha, aap, aap Paresh bhai Paresh Bhai? Genveda Bula na abne. Genveda, my brand ka naam hai sir. Genveda, aapke brand ka naam hai. Jee. <laughs> to, mein kahi na kahi aapke articles padta hoon ya aap, aapka jo discussion ka area hai, wo kahi na kahi samajhne ka try karta hoon. 
तो मैं बेसिकली पहले ट्रेडर था जो एमेजोन फ्लिपकार्ट प्रोडक्ट बेचता था वहां से स्टार्ट करके मैंने प्राइवेट लेबल अभी मेरे मेरा ब्रांड स्टार्ट किया है तो अभी हमारा कोर एरिया ऑफ सेल्स है थ्रू शॉपिफाई तो मेरा मेन शॉपिफाई पे से कंज्यूमर्स को हमारे इस पे प्लेटफॉर्म पे लाके हम सेल कर रहे हैं प्रोडक्ट्स को बट कॉस्ट ऑफ दो चैलेंज आ रहे हैं जो दोनों साइड पे है एक मैन्युफैक्चरिंग के एंड पे कि जो हमारा जो रिपीट प्रोडक्ट एक बार रिप्लेनिश करने का आता है तो उसका क्वालिटी को मेंटेन करना और कॉस्ट ऑफ कस्टमर एक्विजिशन ये दोनों का बैलेंस आउट करके हमारे को सस्टेन करने का उसका कोई अच्छा बैलेंस या अभी के टाइम के मार्केट का क्योंकि आपकी कंपनी जितना जर्नी देखा है वो तो थोड़े सालों पहले का अभी और आने वाले टाइम पे कैसे हमें मैनेज करना चाहिए Thank you. I I was saying I already responded to him on chat. If Harsh can take hmm. this answer, I would also love his views. Sure. So I think uh, uh, Pragati has pointed one of the good points. I believe uh, somewhere it is very important for the private uh, brand to figure out its own niche. Uh, otherwise, it 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 all gets into the uh, bigger competitive space, and you are trying to solve for variables like pricing, like availability, shelf space, etc. which which become a difficult road for the private brand i think if if a private label guy is able to figure out its niche and uh, within the plethora of categories uh, i think uh, there is there is nothing like it uh, a couple of categories that where we where we are seeing seeing this behavior is essentially around uh, health hygiene organic ayurvedic products or even within uh, a, a lot of places where the national br- uh, brands are not so agile which is basically the uh, regional tastes uh, 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 that people cater to especially within the food space so i think uh, from uh, that perspective niche comes uh, as as one of the first uh, in 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 order to proceed great uh, that answers the question navi yes yes it does it does Uh, I was really looking forward कि कौन से एरिया होने चाहिए आने वाले टाइम पे अब आप व्हाइट बोर्ड से हट सकते हैं मेरे ख्याल से आपको जवाब मिल गया है तो यू कैन लीव दैट पेन असाइड आपकी जो फोटो में है हाउ डू आई डू दैट सर यूज एड ऑफ फोटोशॉप थैंक यू महावीर वील मूव टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन दिस इज यश बिनानी Yash, uh, can you hear us? Yeah, hi, hi. Yes. Can am I audible? Yes, absolutely, clearly. Yeah, hi. This I this has been an amazing session, guys. So, uh, my question is like, as a contract manufacturer, how can I increase my business with private labels? Like, what are the key things that they are looking for? Not the big box, big big box brands or something like the private brands that they want to open up. They they'll have low order quantities. So, what are the key things that they are looking for a contract manufacturer? so how can i increase my business as a contract manufacturer to these private labels what is your product yash so i am basically into apparel manufacturing okay. and i am making for all these online private brands instagram brands and i have seen a lot of uh, increase in the business uh, in in an apparel category so okay. i just want to know that how what are the key things that you know one should look for in order to increase to excite these private brands that they, they should come to me as a contract manufacturer for their partners and associations again pragati Like yeah. yeah yeah sure uh, so again see uh, like we were talking about uh, it before uh, differentiation i think in a parallel or uh, the styles and the trends move so fast uh, that i think particular to your uh, category it is very important that you keep uh, innovating you bring about new uh, styles etc and putting them in the right place through the right channels so um, i'm not sure if it's a uh, Uh, the online channels like mintra and all uh, that you target uh, but uh, the only way to increase uh, is one uh, through offering variety i think in your category specifically maintaining quality uh, i think that's the two basic pillars of uh, ensuring that your uh, the, your share of the business increases um, because it's a highly uh, fast moving sort of a category where uh, 
people are looking out for new designs they they want to wear what the celebrities are wearing etc so i think these two things uh, maintaining the quality and uh, offering variety uh, is what can uh, be a game changer in this sort of a category right okay thank you so, Yeah. Yes, she answers your question. I'll I'll just take Rahul with your due permission. I'll take a relevant uh, related question to this asked by one Mr. Kaviram Sahani. Sorry, uh, sorry, please. Keep okay, so yeah, what the, is what he has asked is uh, that uh, he was into export, okay, uh, into staff business. Now he is getting inquiry of uh, fashion masks, which range from ninety nine to five ninety nine. Wow. first kavi let me just tell you you are in essential commodity segment today okay to aap dal chawal ke segment mein aap mere paas aake baithiyega okay the second thing is need jo mask ki hai kavi is there the need of mask is going to get attended in next one month time okay but want of mask is going to sustain for next 2 3 years until unless covid vaccine is introduced in india When I say need for mask is two ply, three ply, and ninety five, sub khatam ho jayegi. Baad mein jab log office jana chalu karenge, they will start traveling, they will start going to meet, they will start partying. They are going to use the masks. At that time, mind you, what you have written very clearly, fashion masks line is going to play a very, very, very critical role. Hmm. Today also, if you see any celebrity on Instagram, on Twitter, on FB, when they post their videos. 15 days back they used to put a normal mask aajkal sabka polka dots aate hain stars aate hain wo flash print ka aata hai kisi ne wo kya kehte hain wo skull ka print laga ke rakha hai even lohe so, baton has yeah. started yes so boss aap to bahut hi flourishing category mein hai agle 2 saal tak bam bam also my view here is that you know if you see uh, For example, Japan people use masks on a day-to-day -day basis, even while traveling metro or whatever. It's something which is not happened here. I agree. But these are the times which are uh, uh, you know unprecedented times, and these lead to a behavioral change. I personally think we are living in a behavioral change times, and a lot of people will start using these accessories, right? For example, or what are care times change, but fashion doesn't, right? So now no one wipes their mouth with their tie, but the tie, right? तो कंठ लंगोट जो है वो मुंह नहीं पहुंचा जाता पर फिर भी पहनी जाती है मास्क आर नाउ आई थिंक हियर टू स्टे पीपल विल कीप वेयरिंग देम वेरी नाइस आ कवि साहब कैन आई आस्क यू आपकी कविता पूरी हुई थैंक यू सो मच सौरव कैन यू हियर मी कैन आई आस्क आई जस्ट थैंक्स फॉर द कंफर्मेशन ऑफ दिस वी आर ऑलरेडी इन द प्रोसेस ऑफ द डेवलपमेंट नाउ माय क्वेश्चन इज टू व्हाट डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन चैनल टू टेक शुड वी गो थ्रू द ऑर्गेनाइज्ड रिटेल टू गो द मोमेंट पॉप डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन चैनल वी आर नॉट श्योर ऑफ दैट ऑनलाइन मेडिकल स्टोर्स वहां पे आप घुसेंगे उसके बाद में मॉम एंड पॉप स्टोर्स अपने आप आपके पास आ जाएंगे ओके सॉरी ओके सिंपल आंसर है और ज्यादा मैं कॉम्प्लिकेटेड करता नहीं लाइफ में थैंक यू थैंक यू सर थैंक्स अ लॉट राहुल ओवर टू यू सो वी हैव शुभम वी विल गो नेक्स्ट शुभम प्लीज गो अहेड एंड आस्क योर क्वेश्चन थैंक यू hello hi uh, thank you for the opportunity you know uh, so my uh, question is in two parts uh, parts one is for kinevi and alok on the product development side and part two is uh, for the other uh, on retailing side so uh, part one is basically uh, due to the covid scenario at the moment how are you looking into or tackling the new product development and solutions to be provided to the players or the customers who comes to you uh, specifically we can take an example of beauty and personal care and what are the disruptive trends which you have seen in past one month uh, which you are trying to uh, uh, like incorporate into your uh, development cycles and uh, part 2 is basically on the retailing side uh, what are your plans in terms of entering into such categories post covid uh, where uh, national brands are not yet present and what is the value do you see in such categories cool uh, can you want to take it first uh yeah <clears throat> i don't mind uh, i'll talk about the product development side the thing is uh, the kind of trends that we are seeing and even harshvardhan had touched upon this as well is there is a lot of immunity boosting products that we are seeing uh, citrus products that are seeing growth um, i mean i'm talking about beverages and even otherwise a lot of uh, health benefit ayurvedic uh, diy i don't know someone told me diy products are also seeing a lot of uh, trend 
uh and personal came one product that caught my attention was uh, a hand lotion uh but with a hand sanitizer so it's the first time i saw something with a hand sanitizer come hand lotion so such innovations that are in tune with uh the covid times or something that pe- like the behavioral changes that will happen these are the kind of product uh products that i see will come uh in the days ahead but basically again touching point health immunity is uh what i see there will be a shift towards that category cool so uh i think um, yes. mainly from the development point of view uh, uh shubham is um uh, what has uh covid taught us is to be a at home b uh, it has linked us to mahabharat back again uh, from, on television so people have started uh, getting those nostalgic feeling of are kya baat hai ye apun dekhte the um people have started loving cooking they have started uh, actually looking into the mirror uh, more in detail of uh, you know in terms of what can i do better which is my home remedy long story short i think in developments as what kinari has mentioned uh, as an uh, uh, a company we have already developed a hand sanitizer with a lotion so uh, it's ready and ready to offer to multiple brands who are wanting to launch this it has put, it, ha- it has its own pros and cons but uh, our job is to be ready with the formula and offer it to brands uh, of course telling them that this is the marketing story and this is something that you got to be very aware of uh second is about uh, uh uh today everything is become about hygiene uh, and the need of the hour but i personally believe that uh, uh hygiene uh, is one part but also feel good is another uh, part that people would really not want to let go of irrespective when more during such period when things are not that great where uh, stepping out is going to be kind of uh, banned for next one at not banned but at least people are not going to step out for next one year where people are going to be you know kind of stuck so products which will be more in tune will be of course these products which make you feel good uh, which gives you a bit of sense of uh, back to roots uh, which are ingredients which are more performance based uh, people will not want to have something which has a shorter shelf life so shelf life of a product uh, especially for a personal care or a cosmetic products will play a bigger role uh sometimes they will say that they are okay to go with a synthetic uh, uh uh preservative because that gives you a longer shelf life so these are certain technical things but overall the disruptive trends are mainly to do with uh, uh, uh for example we have developed we have also developed one three in one um uh, antiseptic and antibacterial uh, uh hygiene wash so basically it takes care of your face it takes care of your hands and it takes care of your body so uh, that's the kind of uh, uh, small marketing disruptive and the gimmick that we are playing with in fact i would like to add this one ingredient that i really see it uh, picking up and it is an indian ingredient which is curcu- uh, turmeric haldi uh, which has also been promoted by modi ji and uh, any ginger based products i think when it comes to beverages and in fact one of my uh, cousins uh, from uh, viral shop and swan foods he's developed this curcumin tablets uh, so innovations like that which have relevance to these times uh, is what is going to happen great uh, so we'll move to a slightly different we'll take up another another question which is slightly different i think uh, he's posted it uh, on the chat box yeah uh, mr gautam agarwal uh, you know if you can go next and ask your question to the panel i can you hear me guys yes yeah. hi so hi hi gautam okay i would consider myself an outsider uh, when it comes to the food industry uh pragati hi special hi to you hi hi how are you very good uh, yeah so a quick uh, chat about my background i've been uh, tied up to pepper fry as a furniture importer uh, i was taking care of their import business for a, a particular house brand which was called kasa ha moving on uh, we also launched our own brand with their amazing marketplace and the response was fantastic no doubt uh, moving on because uh, you know we have an investment pool within the family and uh, even though not big uh, we have that pool and we would like to dedicate that into the food space uh, <laughs> it could be a fad which is probably because of the corona virus that uh, you know things are looking upward for the food industry but being an outsider and a raw person in this industry one would only think 
to you know go to a a, a contract manufacturer like Kinry, uh, discuss out your marketing plans, come out with your brand and invest some money into the marketing and probably launch your brand through an e-commerce channel. Obviously, traditional uh, distribution for a newbies like us would be next to impossible, of course. Uh, is it that simple that it sounds or you have a different suggestion you know, for us, say we have a limited pool of money to invest and we are sure that we want to do it in food, but how and what is the correct way uh, is something I'm, I'm really interested to explore. By having said that, sorry, I would also add that uh, we were also interested to understand if there is any licensing agreement available, uh, say a Middle Eastern brand, which probably would be interested to come out in the Indian market. We would also, you know, because it kind of makes our investment slightly safer, playing on a brand value. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to explore opportunities in the food space, to be honest. Okay, I'll, guys, I'll take this one if it's okay with you. Yeah, yeah. Vatam, so, first come first, uh, taking licensed agreement of a Middle East brand, as you said, uh, for next five, six months, I would recommend no, because uh, and, uh, those containers would be uh, uh, surfing through uneven waters. Okay. Right. You will not be sure that your consignment port pe aya hai. Or suddenly, oh, quarantine ho gaya and it's a comparatively low shelf life product. Mm -hmm. Okay, so advisable. You have to commercials wagera us brand ke saath mein close karne ka koshish kiji. I'll give you a classic example. Right now, it is Ramazan, which is going on, and India is not able to import dates. Okay, uh, from UAE, Dubai, Qatar, etc. Okay. So, food segment, mein jahan tak ho sake, thoda sa imports ke upar, I would suggest that if you can, if you can uh, yes. contain your emotions. <laughs> Second thing is, uh, you have been in a furniture segment or furnishing segment, I, I would, uh, what I learned, and you want to get into food now. Okay. So, the product categories which you want to get into, pickles, squashes, gooseberry candies, uh, health drinks, wheatgrass juice. Wheatgrass juice is something which I don't like. So I'll not recommend it. <laughs> Baki sari jo cheese hai, let me just ensure you, agle ek saal tak, irrespective what you are going to offer to the market, there are buyers sitting out there. Oh, is it? Okay. Uh, it's the demand of packaged food is going to be tremendous. It is right now, in last one and a half month, we were doing an internal data analysis, which Ashtosh can uh, second or may uh, substantiate again. The packaged foods like juices, like noodles, like pastas, instant mixes, heat and eat, okay, pickles, uh, squashes, drinks, they all have gone up. Right. Okay. Cake mixes, uh, I'm not sure if uh, 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 anybody of you have got kids at your home. My daughter is 10 years old. Every day she'll be cooking one cake for sure. Okay, and now she doesn't need help of her mom. So, wo consumption hi ultimately. Okay. So, aap experiment kar rahe ho, chai direct consume kar rahe ho, it is consumption. Aaj aap bazaar mein jayenge, mom and pop store mein aapko pickle nahi milega, papad nahi milega, uh, maggi noodles nahi milega, pasta nahi milega. If you guys are getting, you, please, aapne zarur koi pichle janam mein achche kaam kiye honge. Baking powder, powder nahi milta. Baking powder nahi milta. Or kinnari ka agar aapko mil raha ho, to aap mujhe bata dije ga, mask lega ke aapko aapse collect kar lunga. You are like 15 minutes away from me. Grofus, Grofus ke paas to hona chahiye na, baking powder. Manufacturers nahi mil de na. Mere ghar pe to pada hai. So I am sorted. Mere to sita big basket se order kiya. Very nice. Ashtosh would be very happy. So Gautam, be rest assured. Ek saal, deed saal aapka hai if you want to establish your brand. Okay. And e-commerce would be, you're saying, uh, a safer option, obviously, because the new dis the distribution would not entertain a newbie like us, right? The traditional distribution. So distribution will definitely entertain a newbie like you. I and Alok were discussing this before. So, actually, XYZ company, which is capacity utilization, Alok, that is only 25-30%. Okay, so challenges buddy companies ko bhi hai, kyunki raw material nahi milta hai. Challenges choti companies ko bhi hai. If you have raw material pe command rakh sakte hai, aapke labor pe command rakh sakte hai, you are going to be the king for next 18, 20 months. Well, so I don't plan to manufacture them myself. Uh, 
you know we would probably go for and, a and the I... best part is aap kinari se contact kijiye ki madam aap bana sakte hain kya pickle juices aap se sare product feel the juices bana sakti hu 100% But good thing I have a factory in in the family again. This is these guys are based out of Punjab. They are one of the exporters of these goods. What what is the company's name? It's called Napro with N. Hmm. Quite a famous brand. Uh, hmm. But they are mostly now they've turned themselves into exporters and contract manufacturers. And uh, what these guys have been asking us to do is form a national brand for domestic consumption and you know tie up with biggies like. big baskets or grocers of the world of course even amazon pantry i'm just trying to understand is this route a feasible route from direct from a you know from a brand to a customer or the customer acquisition cost is way too high for a model to be sustainable on a long term main aap se yahi kehne ki koshish kar raha tha in a very simple term now in technical term mm-hmm. customer acquisition cost vis a vis pre covid is going to be almost 30% for food segment going forward for next year year and a half आपकी सोर्सिंग कॉस्ट इज गोइंग टू बी हायर फॉर नेक्स्ट सिक्स एट मंथ्स लुक आलोक इज हैविंग अ स्माइल एंड किनरे इज हैविंग अ स्माइल ऑन सो आपकी सोर्सिंग कॉस्ट महंगी होगी लेकिन आपके जो कस्टमर एक्विजिशन कॉस्ट है दैट इज गोइंग टू बी चीपर बिकॉज़ देयर इज अ देयर इज अ कैप्टिव डिमांड इन द मार्केट ऑल्सो सौरभ सर स्पीकिंग अबाउट टेक्निकल टर्म्स वो यू नो रिटेल में जिम रॉफ जिम रॉय बहुत सारे बड़े बड़े स्केरी स्केरी वर्ड्स होते हैं राइट ई रिटेल में वैसा नहीं है राइट वेयर हाउस है चीफ स्पेस पड़ा हुआ है बारह रुपए पैलेट का उट कस्टमर Via online channels. Having said that, you know, you know, again, a little bit technical. I mean, you know, consideration funnel is there, right? So, first, consideration is people have heard of you, seen you, bought you, tried you, and then go to Tomah. So, leave it. The first thing is easy for you. It's free. It's free. You've come. Consideration set. You've come. You've seen people. You've seen people. Try it. Most probably, we'll do it. After that, your product will speak. Which is why, you know, and that was the biggest part, you know, for for good products, that was the biggest part, you know. Some great products have not been able to launch in the past because they were not able to get past this hurdle. But एक बार वो hill के ऊपर चल जाए, एक बार tipping point हो जाए, फिर वो bottle को गिरने से कोई नहीं रोक सकता. And वही आपको करना, वो आसान हो गया. So Ashutosh, oh, sorry, I'm gonna be a slightly more one more question to this. Like yeah. Amazon have their own in-house brand which are tied right. up with Cloud Tail. Uh, right. Is is Big Bazaar or a Big Basket or Grofers also into the same space of of making their own brand tied up to promotion? On Grofers side, I can say yes, and Big Basket side also I can say yes. So <laughs> 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 private label का तो मतलब ही वही होता है ना मतलब नहीं नहीं I thought which are promoted exclusively by Big Basket as that category. Yeah, yeah. we do have both. Yeah. Both have. So I could probably get in touch with you guys for that. Of course, offer. you can be our OEM partner. अब अब किनरी को कंपटीशन आया है ओके नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन गाइस सेगमेंट ऑल टुगेदर वी आर ट्रेडिशनल स्नैकिंग कंपनी इफ आई मे से वी आई एम इट्स इन द फैमिली दो बट मैडम यू आर ट्राइंग टू हिट टू मेनी बर्ड्स विद वन एरो आई एम आई नो आई एम ट्राइंग टू गेट अ टेस्ट ऑफ द फूड इंडस्ट्री बिकॉज़ आई थिंक दैट्स द ओनली सर्वाइवल इंडस्ट्री नाउ पोस्ट कोविड वेरी नाइस दैट्स एवरीथिंग एल्स सीम्स टू बी लीकिंग एट द टाइम Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, right. Thank you, Gautam. I think uh, we've come to an end uh, of the session. We've already gone past three minutes. Uh, so I will. Wait. Yes, I think yes. It's already four thirty-three. So three three minutes succeeded. So thank you, everybody. Uh, Rahul, is there any book uh, or something like shield? Like that. 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 प्लेटफॉर्म 
uh, Unbrand Asia. You know, this uh, covers latest trends and happenings within the private label space. So, uh, you know, more to work with, along with you all. Uh, I think uh, some pointers that I'm taking, uh, you know, definitely uh, like some top line of the, you know, like uh, session for me. One is, of course, finding your own niche. Uh, you know, other is, uh, you know, how private labels, uh, you know, we were just talking about private labels, how it is growing. But, you know, within this last one month, uh, particularly, you know, of course, need, uh, you know, ye need ho gai, matlab, ye supply chain is puri, you know, amper hui and finally, you know, they are at the forefront, uh, you know, uh, meeting the needs of, particularly in the essential space. So, the growth we were anticipating that will happen in 10 years probably has been cramped into, uh, you know, sorry to, you know, exaggerate, but yes, within a month, I think we've seen that kind of growth and hopefully, uh, you know, we will see, you know, because I think uh, this is a very pro no, SME. Sorry, sorry, I have to interrupt. Anji, absolutely, sir. जो हम 10 साल से दुनिया को सिखाने की कोशिश कर रहे थे वो एक वायरस ने एक महीने में सिखा बिल्कुल <laughs> मैं यही बोल रहा हूं मेरे को एग्जैक्टली exactly लगा एंड दैट्स व्हाई वी चोज दिस टॉपिक फ्रॉम इंडियन रिटेलर डॉट कॉम आई थॉट दिस इज वेरी पर्टिनेंट लॉट ऑफ पीपल हैव बीन राइटिंग टू अस यू नो रेगुलरली यू नो विद देयर क्वेश्चंस दैट यू देयर कुड नॉट हैव बीन अ बेटर पैनल देन यू सो थैंक यू एवरीबॉडी या थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू एवरीवन थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू गाइस बाय Thank you, bye.